Hi everybody, I am That Nursing Prof and welcome to my channel. In today's video, we're going to be talking all about Guillaume Marais. And I'm apologizing in advance for my terrible American pronunciation of this work. But that's how we call it. We call it Guillaume Beret. So what is it? It's an autoimmune syndrome. So your body is attacking itself. It is considered a rare disorder, which is a good thing. So as a little review, normally, right, we have our myelin sheaths that cover and protect our nerves. This helps with nerve transmission. This is a good thing. But people who have Guillain-Barre, demyelination occurs. So these myelin sheaths start to degrade and break down. And because of that, this interferes with that normal transmission. It's decreased. The three phases are the acute phase, which is after the first signs and symptoms start to appear. These usually last for about two weeks, and they actually get worse, progressively worse for two weeks. Then there's the plateau stage. This also lasts for about two weeks, where it kind of peaks and stays that way. And then finally, the recovery phase. This is the good stuff, right? This is when remyelination occurs. And this can take a really long time for some people. It can take several months to up to three years. Unfortunately, the exact cause is unknown, but most patients, roughly two-thirds of patients who get this, have had a recent infection. So it is highly associated with recent infection. Some risk factors that might trigger this syndrome include things like recent exposure to viruses, having lupus or Hodgkin's lymphoma, or recently having surgery. So what are some signs and symptoms? This is an autoimmune disease that attacks the nervous system. So it's gonna make sense that a lot of our signs and symptoms have to do with the nervous system and electrical conduction in the body. So most people say it starts as just a general like pins and needles sensation in their lower extremities and then it spreads to their upper extremities. People will report weakness they might have an unsteady gait or an inability to walk or walk upstairs. They might experience blurry vision or double vision. Difficulty with facial movements, so your cranial nerves. They might report cramping pain. Unable to control their bowel or bladder. Remember, the nervous system controls all of these things, right? So if that's not working well, we're going to have symptoms. They might even have dysrhythmias because the electrical conduction in the heart is disturbed. Scary stuff, they have a hard time breathing. And inability to regulate their temperature and their blood pressure. So they might have really high or really low temperatures, really high or really low blood pressures. So think about the nervous system and what an important role it plays in our body and how it can affect our body when it's not working properly, when it's under attack. How is this diagnosed? Well, a couple of things. They might want to do a spinal tap, and when they do a spinal tap, also known as a lumbar puncture, they will see increased protein. They might want to do something called an electromyography, which is where they measure nerve activity in the muscles. Or they can do nerve conduction studies, where they give you kind of mild shocks, right, not to harm you, but little mild shocks to monitor the signal and see how it travels. So nerve conduction studies. These are things that they could do. As far as nursing interventions go, right, our priority here is the neurological system because that's what's being attacked. And the neurological system kind of controls everything. So we're going to do things like cranial nerve assessment. We talked about the signs and symptoms, loss of bladder or bowel control. So we're going to assess their bladder, their bowel, their GI, their GU function, right? If they're having that like facial paralysis or that inability to move their facial nerves or their eyes, good eye care is going to be a big help to them. If they're having that pain, that cramping pain, administering appropriate pain medications for them, Preventing blood clots. 
A lot of this um, weakness can lead to immobility, and there's a lot of things that immobility can cause, like blood clots, like pressure ulcer formation. So we want to prevent that. Muscle atrophy, so we want to do range of motion exercises to prevent muscle breakdown. They're going to be on strict INO. If they are hypotensive, remember we talked about how the blood pressure can be really high or really low. If they become hypotensive, we're going to treat them with IV fluids and likely vasopressors. Of course, we want to monitor their respiratory status. We want to make sure that they're breathing. Some people do need an artificial airway and do need to be put on a ventilator. The big treatment, which is why I put a star next to it, is the immunoglobulin. So IVIG. This is made from the blood that is healthy and has antibodies. This helps to stop the harmful antibodies. So what they'll do is they'll give this to the patient, the nurse will give this to the patient in the hopes that these new healthy antibodies will help stop the damage that the harmful antibodies are doing. Another option is something called plasmapheresis. So what they'll do is they take out the plasma and the red blood cells from your body. They take the plasma, which is causing the damage, out, and they put back the red blood cells in, in the hopes that those red blood cells will cause new plasma, new healthy plasma, to be made. And another thing they might do if the patient is experiencing bradycardia is they might want to give atropine. This can be a very serious thing, right? And it can affect our nervous system, our respiratory function. We can stop breathing. We can have lifelong damaging effects. For most people, that is not the case, which is a good thing. But it's very important that we take this seriously and that we monitor for everything and treat everybody promptly and appropriately. So that was my video. I hope you found this helpful. Don't forget to like and subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know. And if not, I'll see you on the next one.